So I have quite some videos on how to use the new input system, but I don't actually have a dedicated video on why you should use the new input system. So what exactly is the new input system? Well, it's a system that manages your input and listens for it. What's interesting about it is that it separates the device input from the code. So with the previous input system, in your code, you would have to check for the input. You'd have to say, if we're pressing down this key, then we do this. And if you had to change that key, or if you had to bind a different key, for example, you let the player bind a different key, then you'd have to go in your code and manually change it, or you'd have to make a whole system in order to change your default controls. With the new system though, it automatically separates it for you. So you have an input action asset where you define an action map, which is basically a set of controls, and then your actions, which are your actual controls. And in your action, you can specify what controls you want to bind to it. For example, we can make an action here called jump, and then we could bind the space key to it, but we can also bind any other key to it, and it's not limited by device. So we don't only have to do it with keyboard, we can also bind the A key for our gamepad. The input system will automatically change to your gamepad or to your keyboard depending on which one is being moved at that moment. So you can see here we can add a control scheme and they have a bunch of different kinds of controls here. Keyboard, gamepad, PlayStation, touch, XR. So you can have different control schemes depending on what device you're using, and they can all be grouped under the same actions. So if you build to desktop, the user can press the space key and they can jump. However, if you build to, let's say, PlayStation, then the user will jump with the A key and you would not have to change any code for this whatsoever. All you'd have to do is add in a binding for your PlayStation jump key into the same action and the input system will automatically switch it for you. So this is one thing that's really great about the input system is that it's great for different devices that you're building to, whether that's desktop, touch, which is mobile, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, it will switch it for you automatically. You won't have to do any extra processing on your part. And I think that's one of the main selling points of the input system. But there's a lot of other cool things about the input system. So I've showed you how to add a binding to your control, which the binding is just the key that the player presses or the button the player presses, but there's actually processing that they provide for you so you don't have to do the processing and the code. So for example, you can see that under the action here, we have an action type and a control type. For our action type, they provide different actions, value, button, or pass through. The button is just, well, a button, the user presses a button. And then the value or pass through allows you to select different kinds of control types. The difference between the value and the pass through is that the value performs a disambiguation process, which basically means that it listens for the control that's moving the most and selects it as the main one, while the pass through doesn't perform any sort of processing at all. Whichever control is being moved, let's say it's either the gamepad or the keyboard, it just takes the input from either or and moves the character or whatever you're using the input for. But I mostly want to highlight the control type. You see here they have so many types of control types here. The one I use the most is Vector2. So this is great for, let's say, the WASD keys. If we select Vector2 here, then we can add a binding and add a Vector2 composite. And then you'll see that it has an up, down, left, and right. So we can just assign the WASD keys for the up, down, left, and right. And it will return a Vector2 to us so that we can easily tell what direction the player is wanting to move in. So before I explain interactions, I have to explain another reason why the input system is so good is that it's event-based. So the previous input system, you had to check on every frame in the update when the player was pressing down a button. If the player is pressing down the button, then do this. Or you'd have to do on key down if the player started pressing down the button. But you can see that this can be very messy, especially if you have all this in the update function, it could just get really messy and hard to debug if there's a lot of things going on. But with the event-based system, Unity will tell you when the player has started pressing down and when the player has stopped pressing down, and you will subscribe to these events in your script so you can know when it happens and do certain things. So on press down, do this. On release, stop doing this. So that's super useful because you can decouple your code into different functions without making the update all messy. And it's actually easier if you want to implement some logic that happens in between when you start pressing down and when you 
lift your finger or the button that you're pressing. So that segues into the interactions. The input system has an event called performed, which is this action has been performed. Usually it's like this action has been pressed, if it's a button, for example. So here we can add an interaction that says press. So this action, which is our jump action, will trigger the performed callback if and only if it has been pressed. And we can change here the trigger behavior to do press only. So this is performed when it's pressed. Release only. So this is performed when it's released. Or press and released. So this is performed when it's pressed and when it's released. They also have hold interactions, multi-tap, slow tap, and tap. And this is all out of the box. You don't have to do this in your script. Additionally, they also have processors. So in our vector2, for example, we can invert the vector2 and it will return the vector inverted already. We can normalize it, we can scale it, or we can change the stick dead zone, which is more for game pads, which the joysticks. The dead zone is basically the radius which you want to enable the input on your stick. So if the dead zone is bigger, you have to move the stick more in order for the input to register. Another cool thing that the input system provides are modifiers, which lets you kind of combo together keys. So let's say you want the player to be pressing shift W, to sprint forwards. Well, the modifier here would be the sprint, which you hold down, and then the W actually triggers the action. They also have a button with two modifiers, which is just as the name suggests. And if you're interested, you can also write your custom composite. So you can write your own kind of composite and register them with the API. But this is all out of the box, which is amazing. You don't have to do anything. You just have to make this input action asset and you have to read it from your code. And if you're interested in learning how to use this new input system, I have a whole playlist on it and I'll link that in the description. One other key point that I want to highlight about the new input system is that it is very debugger friendly. So here we go to Window, Analysis, and Input Debugger. They have their own debugger for input. And I have a whole video on this, which I'll link in the description if you want to learn more. And let's say we click the keyboard one. You'll see that now we have all of our keyboard keys here, zero to nine. And if we actually press down on a button, it will show you the value in real time, which is amazing. It shows you the value, the type of value that it returns. So this is great. If something's not happening as you expect, you can just check here to see if it's registering correctly. And there's a bunch of other features this debugger has, which I covered in my other video. And finally, they even have a visualizer package that you can download additionally, so you can visualize your input. So instead of just seeing it in this screen here, which can be kind of confusing with a lot of numbers everywhere, they have a visualizer that draws graphs based on your input that you're giving it. And obviously the old input system did not have any of this. So if you've been on the fence of jumping into the new input system, I definitely recommend you try it out and see if you like it. You can check out my video on how to use it in your project. It is a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually much better for your code organization and will save you headaches in the long run. And I definitely recommend it for anyone that's building to multiple systems or that just have a lot of controls going on everywhere. Although really, I do recommend it for everyone since this is the new input system that Unity will be supporting, although I don't like how you have to download a package for it and it's not directly inside of the editor, but that'll have to do for now. So yeah, I hope you like this video and will consider using the new input system. So I'd like to thank all of my patrons for the support. Thank you so much. You really help make these kind of videos possible and your support is amazing and I really appreciate it. And so I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the enthusiastic tier, we have Evan, Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access for videos, and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you haven't already, make sure to join the Discord channel where you can chat, post memes, or ask for help. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.